having a stockpile is an essential part of running a cost efficient household nowadays. Now having a stockpile is a great way to supercharge your savings, but it's not just about saving money. It's about being able to take control of your budget while ensuring your pantry is always well prepared. For a moment now, I want you to imagine taking your pantry from ordinary and transforming it into a money saving powerhouse. I don't know about you, but that gets me all excited and charged up to take the steps necessary to create a stockpile that not only meets my everyday needs, but also changes my entire grocery game. Now this journey is more than just a well stocked pantry. It's a shift in mindset. With this mindset shift, you'll not only witness the change in your savings, but also feel a sense of empowerment that comes with taking charge of your financial well-being. Now, I hope you're ready to shake things up, the way you shop, the way you save, and how you stockpile, because we're going to elevate your grocery game and give you the power to run a money-saving household. How does that sound to you? If you're in, then let's do it. Now, we just talked about giving you the power to run a money saving household and elevating your grocery game. Now, in order to do that, there are some steps that we need to take in order for us to elevate our game and change our household forever. So, some of the steps that we need to take are going to be, the first step that you need to take is determine why you want to stockpile. That is going to be your first step. You need to determine or know why you want to have a stockpile. That is very important. Your why is very important to building a stockpile. Because once you start building your stockpile and then challenges arise and you get burnt out or you know you get tired or something happens, your why is going to be the one thing that's going to bring you back to continuing on this journey of building your stockpile. Once you know why you want a stockpile, you'll be able to keep going and moving forward with building your stockpile because you know exactly why you want to build that stockpile in the first place. So for me, for example, my why to building my stockpile is because I want to, one, contribute to saving our family money, and two, I want to also be able to save money so that we can put that savings towards a family fund savings account that we can use later on to go on a vacation and that's very important to us so that is why I stockpile to contribute to my household because I'm a stay-at-home mom and that's the one way I'm able to contribute and then to also help us save money so there are some things that I can't control when it comes to saving money but our grocery bill is something that I have absolute control over so I use stockpiling as a way to help us save money and to be able to contribute to cutting the cost of groceries for our household. Okay, so now that you know why you want to have a stockpile, now you need to assess your needs. Now you need to determine what it is you need and what it is that you don't need. You need to take inventory of everything that you have on hand. Now I know this may be a little daunting at first, but once you get the hang of, you know, getting your inventory down on a sheet of paper or digitally, this will be an easy process to do on a regular basis. But in the beginning, it's going to be a little dumpy because you have to take inventory of everything that you have in your house, your pantry, your freezer, and your fridge. And so once you have all this information down, now you're going to look at that list and you're going to determine whether or not you need these things or do you need these things? Do you not or do you? And so once you determine what things you're going to keep and what things you're going to get rid of, now you'll be able to determine what or, or how much of a of that item you need so now that you've assessed your needs now you know exactly what you need and so when you're looking at that list though i want you to just think about a cup but think about something i want you to think about how often you use some of these items that are on your list are these things that you use on a regular consistent basis or is this something that is just a one-off that you bought you know, maybe thinking that this was something that you was going to use or try, and maybe you did try it and you bought it again, but your family really didn't love it, but you bought it anyway. So if it's something that your family doesn't love, that's something that you don't want to continue to buy. You only want to buy things that your family absolutely loves and enjoys, and that's going to make, you know, preparing food and things like that so much easier. Okay, so 
now that you've done that now the next thing you want to do is know how much you need in your stockpile so let's take toothpaste for example let's say that you use a tube of toothpaste once a month and you want to have a three month stockpile you're going to need three tubes of toothpaste to carry you for three months so you know you need three tubes of toothpaste for a three month stockpile and so now you know how much you need of toothpaste and you're going to want to do that for everything you're going to want to know how much of an item you use for everything that you have in your household so you can know how much of that item you need to have on hand to build your stockpile for however for a three month stockpile because right now we're building a three month stockpile supply okay and i really recommend that you start with a three month um stockpile i wouldn't you can go smaller but i really recommend that you start with at least a small three month stockpile to begin with and you can go bigger or you can stay at three months but at least three months and if you think about it when you have a emergency fund they tell you to have at least three months in your emergency fund in case something happens so that gives you enough time to be able to get back on your feet and get another job or what have you to start bringing back in income and within that three months you should have you should be able to have found another job or brought in some income to help you keep moving forward in life and so the same thing applies with your stockpile you want to have at least a three month supply so if something happens or what have you can't get to the grocery store you'll be able to make it for at least three months before you need to start thinking about um replenishing what's in your stockpile okay so now you need to be thinking about where you're going to store this stockpile so we're building a three month stockpile but where are we going to store this three month stockpile maybe you have a garage maybe you have a basement maybe you have somewhere that you can store this item or maybe you have a small apartment and you don't have a basement or garage or somewhere large that you can store your stockpile you have to get creative in that aspect and think about where you can place your stockpile now me on the other hand i live in a small uh house in our house uh i have three places really two but i have a third place where i can really store my uh items so i use my master bathroom as a place to store non-perishable items so my toilet paper paper towels toothpaste soap things like that go in my bathroom and then all of my food items go in my pantry and so i do have a brotherly it's not really small it's a medium-sized pantry and so i can get quite a bit in my pantry and that's where i store my um my groceries is in my pantry now i do have a hall closet that sometimes i'm able to use to store other things inside of the hall closet so i have those places is where i use to store my stockpile so you want to think about that when you're um wanting to build your stockpile where you're going to store your items all right so now you need to set a budget a budget is going to be the thing that's really going to move you forward with building your stockpile you want to have a set budget in place so if you already have a grocery budget that you're already using you want to just take a certain amount of money from your already set grocery budget twenty dollars ten dollars whatever it is you're going to take from your budget that week to put towards building your stockpile you want to have a budget for building your stockpile you don't want to just go willy-nilly go all in the store just start buying things to build your stockpile you want to have a strategy when it comes to building your stockpile and a budget is going to be the first thing that you need to do in this strategy when building your stockpile is to have a set budget for moving forward or for building your three month supply all right so now you're ready and now it's time to go shopping you're ready to move forward you've got your budget you know you're taking inventory you know what you have on hand you know what you need now it's time to go shopping but before we run to the store and just start shopping we need to check the sales ad and the sales cycles and be aware of what's happening inside of the grocery store that is very important so when you're building your stockpile you want to shop according to what's on sale so let's just use that toothpaste example again let's say toothpaste is on sale this week when you go to the store to get that toothpaste you don't want to buy just one toothpaste you want to buy three tubes of toothpaste to last you for that three months you want to get it while it's on sale you never want to pay full price for anything that you're putting inside of your home that is going to save you so much money by shopping the sale you shop the sales and you buy in multiples that is the key to building your stockpile and saving money.
is shopping on the sale and buying in multiples. And then also too, when you're, you know, building your stock pile, I want you to remember that slow and steady wins the race. I want you to take your time. Don't try to get it all at once. Just do a little bit here and a little bit there, and eventually you will get to where you need to go, where you need to get to. So shop the sales, buy in bulk, and do it slowly. Just do a little bit at a time, and you'll eventually get to where you want to be. Okay, so you've went shopping and you've got all this stuff. You know where you're going to store it. Now you need to create an inventory system. You've taken inventory, but now you need to create a system for keeping this, this, this up. So you need to know or you need to create a system that is going to allow you to know what you have on hand at all times. Now for me, I use a digital system and I inventory once a month. Sometimes I'm a little lazy and I don't get to it, but typically I like to inventory once a month and go in, see exactly what I have on hand, do a recount, and then and that way when I'm meal planning throughout the week, I know I can look right at my inventory and know exactly what I have on hand and make meals according to what I already see that I have in my house. And so I jumped a little bit ahead of time because the next thing that we're going to talk about is meal planning. And so that is the key to helping you save money with your stockpile. You want to meal plan using what you have in your stockpile at home, in your pantry, freezer, or fridge first. So let's just say that you check your pantry and you have ground meat. And so you have ground meat, spaghetti, and noodles. And so you know you can make spaghetti. And so with that, you're going to make your spaghetti for the week. And so you know that you have everything that you need to make spaghetti, but you want to have a side. Let's just say that you check the sales ad and broccoli was on sale and your family loves broccoli. So you're going to add broccoli to your grocery list as something that you're going to buy to supplement your meal plan for the week. Now, it's not something that you'll do every week because it's not going to be on sale every week. Now, what you could do is buy broccoli and buy it in bunches and bring it home and flash for up and flash it and then put it in your freezer and use it for later right so that is something that you could definitely do um, when you are buying things that are not per se uh, a part of your meal plan for the week but that's on sale that you want to particularly have for later and so you want to think about when you are grocery shopping I'm just kind of backing up but when you are grocery shopping you want to think about um, whether or not these things are things that you can freeze and use for later. Some things, a lot of things you can really freeze and put in your freezer and pull out and use later and they're just as good as they would be if you bought them fresh right at that moment. So, use your freezer and um, freeze these items. And when you're meal planning, check your freezer, your fridge, your pantry, and your refrigerator to see what all you have on hand and make meals out of the things that you have on hand first then look at the sale ad and see what you can supplement um, for your meal plan for the week as far as like fruits and vegetables and things like that that don't really have a long uh, shelf life to them and so that is what you want to do now if you're really serious about um, building a stockpile then I would like to invite you to join me for a stop out mastery session class that I'll be doing here in a little while. If you're interested in getting more information or really learning about how to stockpile, then I would highly suggest that you sign up for the wait list to get on that wait list so when I do open up this stockpile mastery session, you'll be the first to know.